double replacement, and net ionic equations. So many of the important chemical reactions that take place occur in aqueous solution. We just saw this with the previous classwork when we modeled the reaction of silver nitrate and sodium chloride. So this equation here is showing us what we call a molecular equation. Uh, it doesn't quite give us the entire picture though. We saw that when we did this reaction that these ions, these reactants dissociated, separating into their cations and anions when they dissolve in water. So this is shown in the next equation, equation two, which is a complete ionic equation. Notice that AgNO3 is aqueous. So what this really means is that the silver and the nitrate ions are separated in water. Same thing with NaCl, these ions should be separated. And same thing with NaNO3, these ions are just separated. We didn't separate these guys, because it's a solid. These guys have reacted together and formed a new compound. These ions are not floating around in the water. So as we can see in equation two, the nitrate ion and the sodium ion appear unchanged on both sides of the yield arrow. So this equation may be simplified by eliminating these spectator ions, which are not directly involved in the reaction. So spectator ions are ions in double replacement reaction that don't actually react. Uh, they just kind of are there during the reaction, but they don't really participate in the reaction. Kind of like at a sporting event, the spectators are there watching, but they're not really participating in the event. So we're going to remove our spectator ions that are unchanged on both sides of the arrow. So nitrate begins as aqueous and it ends as aqueous. Sodium begins as aqueous and ends as aqueous. So once we have removed all of those ions, what we're left with is called the net ionic equation. This is showing us just the ions that actually reacted during the course of uh, this reaction. So for the following, we want to cross out spectator ions, and then we want to write our net ionic equation. So you can pause the video right now and try this on your own, and when you're ready to check your work, you can return here. So for question A here, we can eliminate the nitrate and the sodium. What we're left with here is my net ionic equation. So nickel plus two aqueous reacts with two hydroxide aqueous, to form nickel hydroxide solid. Notice that the net ionic equation is still balanced. For the next one, we're going to see that nitrate cancels. You're going to see nitrate canceling a lot because nitrate is always soluble. It's always going to be aqueous. So what we're left here for B, which is a single replacement reaction, is the reaction between iron solid and copper ion to form copper solid and iron ion. Now for this last one, we're going to see that everything cancels. So this is what we call uh, no reaction. Nothing happens here. All of these ions just float around in the water together, not forming any new compounds. So the unusual condition that we saw in question 1c was that everything was spectator ions. They all canceled out. So this reaction didn't occur. Those ions just float around together in the solution. Based on the examples in question one, what type of reactions will you need to write net ionic equation for? So we're going to need to write these for our single replacement and double replacement reactions. So whether or not a precipitate will form depends on the solubility of the new compound. By using the solubility rules for ionic compounds, we can predict whether or not a given compound will be solid or aqueous, if it will form a precipitate or not. So in order to do this, we use our solubility rules. So compounds that are soluble are going to be aqueous in solution whereas compounds that are insoluble will be solid in solution. 
So first one we have on here is calcium carbonate. So I can find where carbonate is, and I see that carbonates are usually insoluble unless combined with group one or ammonium. So group one is going to be that first column on the periodic table. That's things like sodium, lithium, potassium. Uh, but calcium isn't one of those. So based on that, I would conclude that calcium carbonate should be a solid in solution. So go ahead and pause the video and work on the rest of these. And when you're ready to check your answers, return here. So for strontium hydroxide, I get aqueous. Uh, hydroxides are generally going to be insoluble, but strontium is one of the exceptions. Calcium sulfate will be a solid. Usually sulfates are soluble unless they are combined with calcium, so it's going to be a solid. Potassium nitrate and lead nitrate are both nitrates. Those are always soluble with no exceptions. And then the last one is carbonate. Lead carbonate is definitely going to be solid. So for the next couple of questions, we're going to uh, predict the products, uh, determine if the products are soluble or insoluble, balance and include state symbols. We're going to write the net ionic equation. And if there is no reaction, we're going to write NR for no reaction. OK. So to solve this one right here, we need to uh, first identify charges. This is a double replacement reaction, which means that our cations are going to switch spots. So I don't know the charge of, nit uh, of lead, but I know that nitrate is minus one and there's two of them. So my total negative charge is negative two. So my lead, there's only one lead atom, that charge must be positive two. We have sodium, which is always plus one, and sulfate, which is always minus two. So we're going to switch our cations. That means we're going to switch lead plus two and sodium plus one. Those are both cations with positive charges. So if I switch uh, sodium and lead, instead of lead nitrate, I'm going to have sodium nitrate. Sodium is plus one and nitrate is minus one. So these charges already work out. So this is going to leave me then with lead and sulfate. Lead is plus two, sulfate is minus two. So again, these charges already work out here. So we need to next predict what our state of matter is going to be. Uh, for these two products. If everything is aqueous, uh, then we don't need to worry about balancing or writing a net ionic equation. So let's start with sodium nitrate. So we just saw in our solubility rules that nitrates are always soluble. So sodium nitrate is going to be aqueous. Lead sulfate, however, will be a solid. So this reaction does occur We just need to go ahead now and balance and write our net ionic equation. So first thing I know I'm going to need, I have two nitrates over here and two sodiums over here. So I'm going to put this two in front of uh, sodium nitrate. So that gives me two sodium, two nitrate, and then I have one lead and one sulfate on each side. So this guy is now balanced. Now, remember that these other guys just have ones in front of them, but we don't usually write those because they're redundant in chemistry. So now we want to look for things that are unchanged on both sides of the arrow. So nitrate starts as aqueous and it ends as aqueous. Sodium starts as aqueous and ends as aqueous. So there's no change there. So the only thing that actually reacted was my lead plus two ion with my sulfate minus two ion to form lead sulfate solid. So go ahead and pause the video and work on B on your own and then return here when you're ready to check your work. So in B, we're gonna need to begin by identifying charges here. 
So there's no transition metals in B. We have sodium, we have chlorate, we have potassium, and we have chloride. So sodium and potassium are both in column one, so they're going to be plus one. Chlorate is a polyatomic ion, ClO3, with a minus one charge. And then Cl is chloride ion, which also has a minus one charge. So we need to swap our cations, which is going to be sodium and uh, potassium. So I'm going to end up with sodium chloride plus one minus one works and I'm going to get potassium chlorate that's plus one and minus one as well so that works. Now sodium and potassium are both group one ions so that means that they're going to form aqueous compounds. Group one ions like sodium, lithium, potassium, rubidium, those are considered always soluble. So NaCl is aqueous. We already knew that because we have a whole ocean of uh, sodium chloride. And then we have potassium chlorate, which is also going to be aqueous. Now, since everything starts as aqueous and everything ends as aqueous, we're going to have no reaction here. All of the products are aqueous. Now, when you're writing out your net ionic equations, it is important to note that liquids and gases do not break apart into ions, just like our precipitates, just like solids. And in fact, the requirement for a double replacement reaction to occur is a uh, something not being aqueous in the products. If everything's aqueous before and after, nothing happens. So if we start with things that are aqueous and we end with a solid, or maybe we produce a gas, or uh, maybe we produce a liquid, those are all also going to produce reactions as well. We just need a product that is not aqueous. So for these, we're going to uh, want to write out our net ionic equations. So taking a look at the first one, uh, first thing I'm going to do here to help balance this is to write water as HOH. I do that when I see hydroxide and hydrogen in my reactants. This just makes it a little bit easier to balance. So I know that I have two hydroxides here and three hydrogens here. So I'm probably going to aim for 6 and 6 there. Uh, so I'm going to start by putting this 3 in front of calcium hydroxide because I have 3 calciums on the other side. And then we can go ahead and uh, take care of balancing H and OH. So 3 times 2 is giving me 6 hydroxides here. So I need a 6 in front of this guy. And then to take care of phosphate, there's two phosphates here and only one here. So I'm going to need to put a two in front of our phosphoric acid. Uh, so now at this point, we also have six hydrogens, which we see here, six hydrogens. So our equation is now balanced. So to write our net ionic equation, we need to start with everything that is an ion, everything that is aqueous, and we need to form all of their, our products here. Notice that both products, I have a solid and a liquid. So none of these ions are going to be spectator ions. So we have our three calcium plus two, our six hydroxide minus one, our six H plus plus one, and our two uh, phosphate minus three. We're going to form our water and our calcium phosphate solid. So this is actually a acid-base reaction and we have neutralization going on. That's why we have six hydroxides and six hydrogens uh, and they're forming water, which is neutral. So there's no spectator ions in this equation. Now for my next equation, uh, I know that I've got two hydrogens here, so I'm going to put a two in front of that guy. That gives me two hydrogens, but it also gives me two CLs, so I'm going to put a two in front of this guy. Then that leaves me with two sodium, two sodium, one sulfur, one sulfur. So now we're balanced. Now in this equation, notice that Na and Cl are aqueous. They begin as aqueous as well. So my net ionic equation 
is going to just leave behind the uh, hydrogen and the sulfur that are reacting to form hydrogen sulfide gas. In my next equation, the only thing that's going to cancel out is going to be Na and Cl. So we have Na aqueous and Cl aqueous. Here we have Na aqueous and Cl aqueous. This reaction is also already balanced. So I've got one sodium, one sodium. I've got one chlorine, one chlorine. Here I have two hydrogens, one here, one here. I've got this one oxygen plus these two gives me three. There's three there, and there's my carbon and my carbon. So this equation is already balanced. Remember, that means that there are ones in front of each of these. So for my net ionic equation, I know that I'm going to need to leave out Na and Cl because those don't change. They start as aqueous and end as aqueous. But I do have a reaction with the H plus and the hydrogen carbonate here, forming the water and the carbon dioxide. 